Good afternoon and welcome to the Software Engineering Institute's webinar series. My name is Shane McGraw and I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Our webinar series presentation today is Service Oriented Architecture, a Quality Attribute Perspective by Grace Lewis. And now I will turn it over to Grace. Grace? Thank you, Shane. Uh, the agenda for today is that we're going to talk about, first of all, talk about Service Oriented Architecture and Software Architecture. Um, mainly some, just some terminology to, uh, that I'm going to be using throughout the, throughout the webinar today. Then I'm going to talk about service orientation and quality attributes, mainly how different quality attributes are affected by the use of ser service orientation. And finally, some su uh, just a simple summary and some su um, future challenges that are my personal opinions on where, on where SOA is going. So let's start, let's start with a review. First, we're going to review service-oriented architecture concepts, and then we're going to review software architecture concepts. So what is SOA? Uh, SOA is not a technology. Uh, service-oriented architecture is a way of designing, developing, deploying, and managing systems. You can think of it as a development paradigm, or from a more technical perspective, you can think about it as an architectural style and architecture pattern. If we look at it from an architectural pattern or style perspective, we can, we can think about it in terms of components and connectors. As far as components, we have services um, that provide reusable functionality, and these services have very well-defined interfaces. We can think about service consumers that use uh, functionality from these available services and, and compose them into, into full, for example, applications. And um, one characteristic about services also is that separation between service interface and service implementation, which is really what promotes platform independence, another characteristic of this style. A third component is the, uh, the SOA infrastructure, which is something that sits in between the services and the consumers and enables the discovery, the composition, and the invocation of services. Now, as far as connectors, what, what, is, what is transmitted or what is exchanged between services and service consumers, and vice versa, is uh, message-based uh, documents, uh, such as XML. Uh, mainly for four reasons. The first of all is, first of all, there is cost efficiency. Um, the idea that because services uh, represent reusable business functionality and can be reduced many times by many consumers leads to cost efficiency. Also, if you think about it from a single point of maintenance of management for common functionality, this is also another, another benefit associated with cost efficiency. Uh, another benefit is agility. Uh, we're not talking agility in terms of the agile movement, but more agility in terms of, of business ag agility. Because um, services represent reusable business functionality, um, the idea is that before any developer starts any, any development project, it would be to look through this inventory of services that exist either inside or outside the organization and take advantage of existing functionality to reduce development time um, and also reduce time to market. Uh, the third one would be legacy leverage. Uh, the idea of having uh, service implementation completely separate from, from service interface allows service implementation to be in pretty much any language and that definitely allows people to leverage um, legacy systems. In fact, this is still the number one driver nowadays. And finally, adaptability. Again, because of the separation between service interface and service implementation, it allows for incremental uh, deployment of services and also incremental modernization where uh, legacy systems can coexist with services and, and therefore um, you can do an incre incremental modernization. Now, that those would be the concepts related to service oriented architecture that I wanted to review. I also wanted to review some concepts associated to software architecture because I will be using some of these terms throughout the webinar. Um, as far as software architecture, there are many, many definitions of software architecture. In fact, if you look at our, at our website, you will find approximately 150 definitions of software architecture that we've collected over the years. However, the definition that we use is that a software architecture for a system is a structure or structures of the system which comprise elements, their externally visible properties, and the relationships among them. Let me break down that definition. The reason why we say that it's the structure or structures of the system is because um, any system has multiple structures. It has a design time structure. It has a runtime structure. You could also think of these as views. So a system does not really have a single architecture or a single structure. Um, which comprise elements. These are the main components of the system. And finally, the external, externally visible properties are, as an architect, the assumptions that I can make about the characteristics of each component. 
and the relationships would be the connectors, which is why uh, usually an architecture is defined as a, as, a, as a set of components and connectors. Now, why do you create an art, a software architecture? Why have we, we've, be, we've been uh, saying for, for many, many years that, that software architecture is important? Because you can start understanding and even predicting quality attributes by studying the architecture of the system. In case you haven't heard the term quality attribute before, you can think of it as a property of a system by which quality will be judged by a stakeholder or stakeholders. Uh, some people uh, tend to call quality attributes non-functional requirements. However, the, the use of non-functional requirements that it doesn't doesn't ring well with me because I can't think of anything that is non-functional. But in any case, that is the that is the term that is used by many many folks in the field. 